Hello and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's video we're going to be talking about three types of collocations. Strong, fixed and weak collocations. So without further ado, let's just get started. Alright, so um, we're going to start with strong collocation. What is a strong collocation? It doesn't represent strength. No, it doesn't mean that this collocation is like a Hercules or something so that it can, it can lift a very heavy object. No, it doesn't mean like that at all. Yeah, so strong collocations means this collocation is only attached, is only associated with one single word. So it doesn't, it's not associated with other, other words, for example. Yeah, so it's like the perfect partner, I would say. So this example is mitigating. This adjective word, mitigating, is always associated with circumstances or factors. Let's, let's see the example. Although she was found guilty, the jury felt there were mitigating circumstances. Mitigating circumstances here means circumstances that, that can lessen the blame. Yeah? So from this example, we can say that mitigating is only associated with circumstances or factors nothing else that's what we call strong collocation so it's not free to anyone you know it's very loyal and very faithful and apart from that i've also got four other examples of strong collocation that can represent strong collocations the first one is inclement weather in the context in the in the sentence inclement weather was expected that means unpleasant weather, very unpleasant weather, and this is very formal, yeah? So inclement itself is always exclusively associated with weather, nothing else, and you have to keep that in mind, yeah? The second one, she has open hair. Open hair, this is also a collocation. Open itself means reddish brown in color, and that uh, expresses the color of the hair, right? It doesn't uh, it doesn't describe anything else. It's just, it just describes um, hair, okay? The third example is, I felt deliriously happy. Deliriously happy means extremely happy. Um, deliriously itself is the adverb which, you know, describes happy uh, as the adjective only, nothing else, even though we've had let's say, other synonyms of happy, for example, glad, content, or maybe uh, the, the, the antonyms like sad, or I don't know, sorrowful, and so on. Deliriously itself is always associated with happy, nothing else. That's what we call very strong, very loyal. And the last example of strong collocation for today's video is the chairman adjourned the meeting. Adjourned the meeting, this is a collocation as well, and adjourn itself means have a pause or a rest during a meeting or trial. And adjourn itself is also associated exclusively with meeting or trial. Move on to the next type of collocations. It's fixed collocations. You can probably, you know, imagine or predict the meaning of fixed. Fixed means, you know, it's not changeable, I would say, and it's just, you know, permanent, yeah. Uh, here is the example. I was walking to and fro. I was walking to and fro. To and fro means I was walking in one direction and then in the opposite direction, a repeated number of times. So it's like you are walking without any specific direction, so you're just like strolling around, I would say. So it's just to and fro, yeah? And to and fro sometimes cannot be predicted in in terms of the meaning, yeah? And you can't really uh, guess uh, the single word of that collocation. For example, like you just predict, you, you, you try to predict the meaning of to and then and and then fro. 
No, it has completely different meaning. Okay, and this is what we call an idiom. The last type of collocation is weak collocations. Weak collocations, we can try to you know um, predict as well. You can we can try to guess. Previously, we discussed about strong collocation, which is very loyal and very faithful. You know, on the other hand, weak collocation is the opposite. It's not very loyal. It can be open to any other words. You know, uh, for example, the word broad, broad. In this con, in this example, for example, you are in broad agreement with someone. If you are in broad agreement with someone, it means you are generally in agreement with, with them. Yeah, in agreement with. So broad itself is not only associated with agreement, but also with other words. For example, a broad avenue, a broad smile, broad shoulders, a broad accent, or the meaning is accent, uh, I mean strong accent, and then a broad hint, a strong hint, and so on. So this is what we call weak collocations. So basically between strong collocations and weak collocations, there is what we call a continuum. What is a continuum? Continuum is like the type of collocation as well, but this one is not too strong, but it's not too weak as well. So it's it lies in the middle of the strong and weak. For example, the word is picturesque. The word picturesque itself means, you know, nice or beautiful or yeah, it's just in terms of the view, it's just breathtaking. But in this context, picturesque is not very limited to one single word, but it's not too free to any word. It's quite in the middle, yeah? And picturesque itself collocates with village, location, and town. And this is what we call continuum. So that was it, the uh, discussion about types of collocations, strong, fixed, and weak. Um, I hope you can get something new from today's video, and I'm gonna see you again next time in another video. See you and bye-bye.